this in the URL authentication log. This is the, this is the classic one. Uh, you can see uh, somebody comes in really quick, and of course goes for goes for the the big one straight away. Uh, goes for root, and uh, well, fortunately, uh, technology, uh, at least when when I use was, came to our rescue pretty quick. Well, well anyway, the, the attack here is what we're trying to do is uh, rapidly, uh, well, uh, try likely usernames, hold the, the password, they have a password out of the dictionary somewhere, and keep going until you break in and you have a profit. So uh, anyway, the, you know, the traditional brute force attack, we, we would see uh, um, a frequency of, well, several attacks per second, or very closely in closest space. So, if you're using PF, like I do everywhere, uh, internet facing, this is this is your um, response to that. Um, the rules here basically have you have a table of, of uh, that you will fill with IP addresses. Anything that comes from a member of that table um, is blocked, and you got the your pass rule that says basically. Um, um, uh, set, set some parameters for uh, for the uh, incoming uh, host behavior. Here we have the max source connections from one host, uh, 100. Uh, you you would not want uh, 100 SSH session to, to one host, but well, uh, it's a limit. The coming in at a rate of uh, 15 attempts per five seconds. I think that's roughly as as fast as I can type anyway. <laughs> So, uh, but I, I managed to block myself with these exact rules. Anyway, anyway, who, uh, any host that exceeds any of these limits is thrown into the brute force table, where we will get blocked, and for good, uh, good measure, we flush all existing connections from that host. Problem solved. And uh, basically, this, this is a general, uh, general mechanism you can apply similar techniques to. To any <coughs> any service, really, it doesn't doesn't have to be SSH. Uh, if you're stuck with Linux, you would do something like this. Uh, but then again, you would not get the uh, <coughs> all the you would not have stuff like max number of connection limit and uh, well, you know, the usual IP tables works. And of course, uh, with Linux being Linux, you would need a separate set of rules and a separate set of, uh, for the IP6 tables. Um, I, I don't know about the Cisco tools or whatever. I assume something. Well, the uh, the proprietary products probably have something like this, or it's probably implementable some, somehow. But um, I really don't know. But anyway, the, the traditional brute force attack was a solved problem. Well, you just put them on a shit list, and they they never well, they don't fill up your logs anymore. Now. What happened in November 2008 was I, you know, okay, the resolution is awful here. Um, anyway, you can see the, the actual logs here. This is what it, what it looks like. What happens here is you see uh, a sequence of attempts at one specific user. We start with alias, and we have something like 15 different hosts trying once, going for alias. Then they move, move on to Amanda. Next one is Amavis. And they come from all over. And you can see the, uh, the timing here is frequency is, well, they're so widely, uh, widely apart that, uh, well, you can't really make an no, no overload table rule to block that. You know, so uh, it was kind of frust frustrating. Um, so, well, my f initial reaction was, of course, well, I don't get this. What's happening? So, uh, really, well, I'm a strong believer. Well, I was a strong believer in my abil ability to write PF rules to block these, uh, which, of course, failed miserably. Uh, and well, for the obvious reason, if you look, look at the data, well, something that happens twice within an hour <laughs> just won't match anything. So. Um, um, so, I, well, they weren't 
coming in and well there never has been a user alias on any of my boxes for example um, but looking at what I was seeing I came up with well this is probably their business plan uh, you have a bunch of machines you control from somewhere and you have them try one time each flying fly it under radar so, uh, much like the, the old-fashioned uh, the old ones, well, you try and try again, but you, it's distributed, and uh, with rough algorithm, pick a host from a pool, assign a username and password from whatever source you have. For each host, you try logging in with the chosen target, and the username and password, if successful, report back, report back to base, we think. Or otherwise, wait for instruction. And this will go on and on, and Apparently, it must have succeeded because there, of this, you know, this first round, it was something like a thousand hosts that participated. Um, now, after a while, well, well again, the, the motivation, of course, for uh, the attacker is, well, you've got a Unix machine, which is a powerful thing, really desirable, and you know, you've got all the good tools there. And I guess the lesson even here is that if you've got a guessable password, you will be owned. Sooner or later, that will happen. Now, the new thing here was we were seeing this distributed from a, well, I think it was about a thousand house. And uh, the next thing that happened was I, uh, I've been blogging a little while, and this scored me my first uh, flash dotting, uh, which, uh, well, it's fun reading the comments. Uh, and uh, well, but, well, do not make the mistake of actually responding. If you have a slash data, do not respond to commands. You will regret it. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, well, it was uh, I think it was pretty evenly distributed between the uh, uh, let's see, um, about, uh, about fifty percent of the commands was oh, this shit I doesn't know is, uh, what's happening anyway. Is we, we keep seeing this is just normal. There's no, nothing seeing, seeing here. The rest, uh, well, there was a quite a few who said, "Well, yeah, we're actually seeing this." And uh, there was some some of them reported that, well, something like seventy percent match with the hosts you're seeing. Okay, so some of them sent me log data, and others, well, well, most of them couldn't. But anyway, um, well, the, listen was not the first of observation, and well, I just kept going. Um, I kept collecting the log data, and well, not much happened, really. Um, it also involved, well, f while this was going on, I went for a three-week three vacation uh, in Thailand, came back, and uh, in the meantime, well, <laughs> December 30th, they stopped. Last user was Sophia, and well, the uh, uh, yeah, the, the main statistics here, they m made all 30,000 uh, um, attempts. They tried 6,100 different user IDs. And yeah, 1,193 hosts uh, um, uh, um, were, were, in, were in the pool at, uh, during the entire phase. Then. Um, so what we can see from our logs, you can verify this by looking at the data if you like is that, well, they only tried uh, password authentication. Um, for the most part, uh, they cycled through an alphabetic order uh, with some in interruptions for, well, a few hundred attempts at root. Uh, and then again, well, from anything from a few seconds to several minutes between the attempts, and one machine would uh, in, in, in any um, individual machine would come back at very long intervals. So uh, basically, there was nothing more to see there. Well, the blog post was out, and uh, to bypass well to that, this was becoming very popular. Yeah, well, the thing is, but uh, this, this this time, uh, most of the uh, well, people were, were were using stuff like the the overload tables. They also had a fail to ban. I think f f around this. Uh, uh, around this time, we, uh, uh, we started working on the, the fail the band project, started working on, the, on distributing uh, 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 lists 
uh, harvests from uh, from Reddit's hosts, but I don't think they have that running at the uh, at the time. Now, one thing that bothered me a little was, or well, I so it was a bit strange um, on the site uh, where I'm uh, where I was allowed to collect data. Uh, we had no Linux boxes; we had only FreeBSD and OpenBSD boxes as, as the Unix things. We also had some some of that other squishy st stuff, but um, they wouldn't be be running any services anyway, and uh, probably wouldn't be directly reachable. So, um, but what I was seeing is that they were not trying the directly internet-facing OpenBSD boxes, but they were trying for the FreeBSD boxes for some reason. I yeah, first uh, I don't know why, but that was that's what data shows. And well, the early uh, conclusions was well. Uh, the, uh, from what from what I could see, they were fairly even distributed through most most countries in the world. But I, I haven't I haven't really done, done a, a good number crunching on that. But uh, it seems fa fairly well distributed. So um, yeah, basically, uh, I was quite happy that I had permit root root logging uh, set to no in my SSH configs. And um, at this point, we hadn't forced any users to uh, only keys only um, authentication. But you know, our friend John the Ripper had uh, for forced out the, the worst ones. Um, and uh, well, basically, it looked like the um, well, we, I made a made a graph of uh, attempts. Uh, Number of, number of attempts per, per day graphed over uh, number of uh, unique users and um, uh, number of unique hosts participating. So you see the well, start out with <coughs> a lot of activity and it sort of peters out, has a, uh, has a peak at the end there, and then it just went away. So I thought, well, okay, it's obviously, it's obvious that the odds against succeeding were large enough that, okay, this was probably just an experiment, and they went away. So, and what I got from it was, okay, a couple of slashed other blog posts. Possible, possibly it made it pushed a few more books of mine. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it's um, no, it, it would have been a comforting, comforting thought. But they came back in April. This time it started with root, and um, yeah, well, basically the 2,318 attempts at root and going on to admin and. Well, full log is well, same ba your same basic uh, uh, authentication log. Uh, you can see well, um, it's fairly evenly distributed um, over the over the planet, as far as I know. But it's possible to run uh, run further analysis on that. And in fact, there have been. A few academics have contacted, contacted me and wanted to uh, do analysis, but for some reason they never came back with uh, anything useful. <laughs> so um, anyway, another blog post, another slashed out storm, and uh, well, uh, people were well, weren't quite as equally divided. I think basically the same same guys who said, "Well, this is, this is shit. It doesn't know anything." We're still saying that, but there is. Uh, People are uh, uh, starting to believe that well, there is actually a pattern here. And again, there was like I see seventy percent of your machines in my logs. And then it turned out people have who had actually been rooted, or well, uh, uh, they managed to track down some uh, some sysadmins on some of the infected hosts. And this was Linux machines. <laughs> and the Linux, these Linux machines had a binary stuffed in temp called dt underscore ssh5, and it did, exact, did those logins or login attempts. And well, why was it in temp? Temp is usually world readable and world writable. So, convenient place, and any login will do. 
Uh, so we, again, three basic lessons. Stay, stay away from guessable passwords, if you have to use passwords at all. Watch for weird files. Weird meaning anything you didn't put there yourself, even if it's in temp. And well, at this, at this point, I was starting to yell at people, you need to internalize properly the fact that permit root login, yes, is a bad idea. That's, that's the way it is. Now, what DT SSH5 did, uh, as we pretty much what we described earlier, pick an host from our pool, assign username and password, reach host, try username and password. If successful, drop our binary and temp, start it, report back to base, else we'd otherwise wait for instructions, go to one, and, well, they apparently succeeded <coughs> in a number of. Uh, in a uh, number of cases. So um, for some reason, I never managed to track down an, an actual copy of the binary, but it's, it's, uh, it's, possibly, it's possible it's um, stored somewhere. Um, but then, uh, the, it was fairly obvious that this was the, the basic algorithm. Um, and in total, just to make, it, uh, make this uh, Talk a little manageable. We uh, this is the these are the li links to the data, and we had we had uh, um, eight sequences first in uh, 2008, uh, s several in 2009, 2010. They came back a couple of times in uh, 2011, and finally in 2012. Um, there were some uh, vari uh, variety. You can see the. Uh, in late 2009, there were uh, well the, the peak activity as far as uh, as far as we know with eight more, more than 8,000 hosts participating. Um, well, and again, they they just kept coming back. I, I posted a few times or more times a, a face uh, uh, to my blog and it was slashed out for it, but no, there really wasn't much news there. Um, so what happened while well, we there were quiet times, or it's possible they were just uh, uh, directing their attention elsewhere. Uh, we were still not seeing, uh, well, they weren't getting in, in, into my, uh, my machines, but they were, uh, for, uh, as you can see in the, uh, in the overview here, the, uh, the cloud was growing for a while. Um, and then tapered off, uh, off again later. Um, so then for a while, I, know, I kept posting every, every time I thought I had, had a new uh, angle to it. And uh, well, I think it was when the, the, the cloud hit about 5,000 members that I coined the phrase the Hail Mary cloud. And uh, you would not believe, oh, I, I coined that phrase, and I used that in my blog post. And instantaneously, there were hundreds, literally hundreds of Hail Mary Cloud experts on Slashdot. You wouldn't believe this. <laughs> so uh, and they well, obviously were very much knowledgeable about how to block these, uh, these guys. So um, they, can, they can be fun to watch, but I, s I still did not answer those uh, comments. So um, anyway, from uh, about August 10, 2010, uh, I, uh, I can see the, the, uh, the cloud just went a little way. There was nothing much to do about it. Well, let's collect the data, see if we can make some sense of this. And well, again, academics started uh, contacting me, and uh, well, somebody, at least one of them, said, "Well, uh, this sounds like a good uh, PhD project." But uh, again, I never, never heard about it. Um, and the last one we had uh, coming in was um, in April 2012, which was. Oh, Kind of surprised me because it had been away so uh, for so long, but this time they were. This, this was the first time they were attempting to uh, knock my uh, my OpenBSD boxes. Uh, in fact, they they, on, they this, this time they only uh, targeted one OpenBSD system. And at first, I thought uh, they were only going for root, but uh, I also thought we were on the two machines. But uh, well, uh, I. Let's say I had a trivial scripting error that gave me wrong data. Uh, what was interesting here was that the, the um, most of the attempts were timed with 
some are like 10 seconds apart. So they, um, and for quite a, quite a while there were only two, uh, two systems um, uh, alternating, but 10 seconds apart, so they were, they were still under the radar. Well, on a more busy side, where there would be somebody, somebody uh, uh, in addition to me, the main sysadmin logging in, it probably wouldn't have, have been noticed, but um, this is what, what we saw. And um, well, uh, so at this, uh, at this point, they were down to 23 hosts, and they just went away. Um, but then again, I scored another slash dotting. I was quite happy about that, really. Um, so, so what can you do about this? Well, the lesson really is common sense systems administration. For one thing, you need to read your logs, or you need to set up a robot to read your logs. Uh, there are dozens of good tools that will give you stuff <laughs> like, will send you a warning if there are a lot of bogus login attempts, for example. Um, I, in this case, I use Log Sentry, which sends me, uh, sends me an email uh, uh, whenever I want it. And of course, you need to keep your system up to date. Um, for uh, for SSH, uh, well, if you're using OpenBSD or uh, and, and, and a recent OpenBSD, you only, you almost have the latest OpenSSH, so you're good. Um, there are um, uh, packaging practice varies a lot. I'm not quite sure what FreeBSD has at this uh, this point, but. Um, the way to go is anyway go to openssh.org. Check what the new, uh, what the newest version is. If your system use has something older, yell at your package manager. <laughs> yell at your packager. Have 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 them updated. And of course, well once once you've got the right binaries in place, uh, configure configure configure. And there are two things, as my Mr. Lucas here will also tell you, there are two. Uh, Two SSHD config lines you really want. Permit root plugin, no. And password authentication, no. Then train your users. Make them generate the keys, and you're good. And I can, uh, uh, and well, SSH mastery sets you back, what is it, 10, 10 bucks? 10 bucks for the ebook, um, 14 for the paper, depending on yeah, what's on so. the so, so, so if, if anybody has a quarrel with that, you, you can afford 15 bucks to <laughs> have, 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 them, have them read that. But he creates another <coughs> problem. So I'm not really sure. I mean, unless he can be protected with some sort of keychain and unlocked by a single password, and you make sure that your clients are doing that, and he's becoming a whole other problem. And it's very key management can be. Uh, than a password. So anyway, an, anything that's crackable is... Uh, well, is, no, oh. the simple is they lose the, the, the laptop or whatever, yeah. and then you switch. Yes. Whatever. Yeah, you, you need to need to watch for these things. Uh, so... Um, um, yes, key, keys are not ideal, but they suck a lot less than passwords. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the way to... Uh, no, most definitely, yes. I mean, I agree with the, the total... Mm -hmm. So but then again, you, 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 you need to ensure that your keys are secure. That's, uh, yeah, so you're not quite home free, but you're making your life a lot easier. You could have a number of these things. Um, you, can, you can also argue, though, that they have zero success with the password. So right. this is moot. Hmm. Well, at some point, they'll be successful, but look at their they success rate. They had zero success with Peter's. <laughs> That's no, well, how, how but with well uh, obviously there were, there were at least five thousand Linux machines that got uh, got broken into. So, uh, and we really we, we don't know how many total. Uh, would with a little more openness between sysadmins and a little checking each other's logs, we could probably estimate the uh, um, the total uh, uh, amount of hosts and. And play at any time, but these logs have been deleted. So uh, this is uh, actually pretty much historical. Um, and again, for keeping them up and keeping them guessing, well, um, 
If I was a hardcore encryption guy, I would now. I would spend like half hour at least um, talking about the, the wonders of various encryption methods. I won't do that. I'm a system I'm not a developer. So uh, when I came him uh, after, well, after a lot of discussions about these things over beer, I came up with one simple metric that anybody can understand, which is how many bytes would a would-be intruder have to get exactly right to get into your system? Now, there is, well, so I made a little table. If you use passwords, well, how many bytes are your password? You, you don't have to tell me, <laughs> but think about it. Now, another popular uh, thing to do is run on a uh, on the uh, on the relevant <coughs> port. Well, port numbers are limited to it's a uh, it's a sixteen bit bit value. They need to guess two bytes. Port knocking that always comes up. The short version here. I'll be getting back to it. Port knocking helps, or it, they have to guess, well, it's still a 16-bit value, each port. So essentially, you, get, you know, set yourself up with an extra password. Uh, bravo, you got a Unicode password, but it's still a password. And they're out there guessing. Uh, but then again, most port knockers have at least, in theory, moved to single packet uh, uh, authorization, which gives you, well, they still have to guess what port it is, two bytes, plus whatever you can stuff in here in a packet. And that's one of the things, the interesting side effects of going to IPv6 is uh, your secrets can uh, shrunk by a few bytes <laughs> uh, going, going that way. And then again, my favorite, the key only, well, whatever strength your key is. It could be several, several kilobytes uh, for, for, a, uh, for a strong uh, SSH mm -hmm. key. So, well, it's... So the key only gets rid of the obnoxious lock, at least. Because yeah. <laughs> well, like, uh, you will have people trying anyway, so the no noise in your logs uh, will be there. <laughs> at least, at least for the, the slow guys, you, we're, we're, you, we can't, you can't effectively block them at the, at the network level, so you actually have to do some of these things. But, uh, no. Yes. So, and again, well, as I said, the end of the slide here, you can uh, combine several of these methods and piss off your user. Or uh, OpenSSH also lets you have uh, two-factor authentication, uh, one of which is fairly easy to install and comes from Google. So uh, you can look at that. The, uh, there are several uh, possibilities there. and. Uh, so two-factor authentication gives you, uh, well, it's probably the way to go, but it's a little hazard to set up, but uh, you could do that. Now, as I said, you've got to have keys. If you do this, uh, uh, you probably will piss off your users in doing this as well. But as I said, you can, uh, well, buy, my, uh, buy Mr. Lucas's book and throw it at your users and have them do this. Uh, there is, for those of you who are settled with um, <coughs> certain uh, certain tools that require root login anyway, as a little secret here, you can match on which interface. So you can you can you can probably satisfy even the Oracle tools. I said it um, by uh, allowing uh, uh, passwords and root logging on on your uh, management interface. I, I said it, well, I, yeah, I, so, sometimes we have to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, I was promised to come back to port knocking, and, um, well, the thing is, every, every single time anybody mentions these episodes, or one of them, well, there are two, two suggestions. The one is, well, I have this IP tables rule that will catch this. No, it won't. <laughs> Well, that's useless. The other one, why not use port knocking? Well, as I said, well, port knocking, you're probably familiar with the term. Anyone not familiar with it? Anyway, okay. Well, port knocking is 
So the general idea is that you set up something, you set up a machine that doesn't actively listen on any port, uh, any ports, but uh, if you're if you contact, contact that machine at a predetermined sequence of ports, uh, it opens up for the IP address that the traffic comes from. Which sounds smart to some people. Um, it's even possible to implement port knocking with only the tools in the OpenBSD base system. I do not recommend you do it, but it's possible. And well, as I well sk skip to the chase, I wouldn't uh, use port knocking as, as an excuse to not keeping your system patched. And I'll tell you why. Um, port knocking. It, well, the the one thing that port knocking always adds is another daemon. It's a daemon that reads your firewall logs, and with your with every port. Uh, close to, to start with, that demon dies, you've bricked your system. No way in. So, uh, that's the one thing. Uh, the other thing is that, as I said earlier, uh, ports are simply 16-bit uh, values, so you're basically creating another password. Bravo, your Unicode password, that's really, really hard to change, and it's probably common to all users of that system. And, of course, the, the real kicker is that since any attempt at guessing your port knocking se sequence will be indistinguishable from random network noise, you will not know they're trying until they've succeeded. So, I was expecting some protest here, <laughs> but anyway, uh, you you get you, know, get you score yourself a Unicode password with very little uh, extra security in my, to my uh, mind. But then again, um, if you uh, if you m uh, mention all these things to a uh, port knocking aficionado, he he will come back. Oh, no, we don't use that anymore. We have gone to a single packet packet authorization anyway. But you know. Nocti and all of them have still have the old code intact, so while it's out there, um, probably somebody uses it, uh, and uh, at least it's a very, very common misconception that it actually helps for anything. There was one surprise that came in um, early this year that um, oh, I, I wasn't surprised actually because uh, uh, the one of the te techniques that uh, people would use, will say, move your SSHD to listen to 2222 or something. And uh, actually the guy who contacted me in February uh, said, well, he had done that, but now I kept seeing people trying to scratch that one as well. Oh, well, it's not netted me another slash dotting, so I'm, I'm fine <laughs> with that. <laughs> but yeah, so basically uh, we're still talking about a 16-bit number and with enough well, with enough resources, and especially if you're using somebody else's resources, it's not that hard to guess. And it's not that hard to port scan either. So, well, but anyway, that's now it's, I actually, uh, when I first wrote about the, um, uh, the overload rules in my PF tutorial, I predicted that, well, moving to, to a separate port probably won't help. It took, it took about five years before I could actually see live data on that, that happening, but it's, it's happened. So um, another score, I guess. Um, the uh, conclusion so far is, well, well what I, um, with all the uh, media attention that work was the, and all the uh, what, um, uh, Microsoft People were saying, "Oh, well, this, this cures. This just proves that uh, you have Linux. You have viruses on Linux as well, and you know, SSH is useless." And well, it, to my mind, they're wrong. Um, OpenSSH is maintained as part of OpenBSD. Uh, you can't find better code anywhere. Configure it properly and forget about uh, <coughs> passwords. You're probably good. Um, the Hail Mary Cloud is um, certainly, in, certainly interesting in the uh, 
uh, in the sense that it's distributed computing for malicious purposes. Uh, sort of like study at home, but uh, you know, <laughs> but for uh, for breaking into people people's uh, kit. So um, the main uh, lesson here, I guess, is um, if you uh, keep your head around uh, about you and do common sense things, you're okay. If you're running you're running a tight ship on Unix, you're okay. Uh, you're up against uh, the fact that computing power is becoming cheaper by the minute, and there's a lot of people who do not do well, do less common sense things, and they they will be rooted and they will be part of that uh, mass of machines uh, tr trying uh, trying to use your stuff. So, um, and the interesting thing is, while I was writing this presentation. Uh, WordPress was being being attacked in exactly the same way. Large numbers of hosts guessing passwords for admin accounts on, uh, on, on WordPress, and I think it's, it's probably the uh, the wave of the future. You know, massively distributed attacks on applications. Um, thing is, uh, your your thousand uh, dollar machine is usable for a lot of things. So they, they will be uh, they, uh, they will be becoming for you, but you, and you have to you really have to uh, be aware that you are you are a target. You per, well I'm, I haven't seen any, any bull size on anybody's backs, but that doesn't mean they're they're not there. <laughs> so um, but anyway the conclusion is that as long as you uh, admin your system properly, like keeping it up to date, uh, really only keep stuff running that you need to have running, and you keep watching the logs for weirdness, you're, you're okay. So uh, I guess the conclusions weren't all that, uh, weren't all that scandalous, but it's just, a, just, another day, uh, just another few days in the sysadmin's life, I guess. Um, any questions? Yes? Michael, not, not a question, something I wanted to throw out. <coughs> that we've observed uh, with the distributed WordPress attacks. Uh, they keep, they appear to be keeping track of machines that they previously got into. Mm -hmm. So when that machine is taken offline, wiped, and a new install put in place at the same IP, uh, they turn and focus on that very much. That's uh, interesting. We have a customer mm -hmm. who, uh, is still in denial that they don't know how to secure WordPress oh. because they've reinstalled the machine from media repeatedly. Mm -hmm. uh, from from different media, but they're all little tweaks to make WordPress secure. And mm -hmm. I can sit there with the Netflow <coughs> system and just watch the fun as soon yeah. as the machine starts to pay. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, you know, they, they they obviously didn't read the how-to. Um, well, what's 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 the trick? Like rename your admin user or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, basically that's it. It is. It can be. Well, for most of the cases are broken. Yeah, are broken. Getting on, getting on. Period. Like OS Commerce, for example, is completely completely broken. It's uh, it's uh, Listen, Every there is one. That's why they use everywhere. It no, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's one that comes in two, two hours later. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's a solved problem. So. But then I got the, the swarm attacks on various applications. We're seeing, seeing it now on, on WordPress. We're just, we can just guess who's next. <laughs> You're talking one thing very slowly. Mm. It's not predictable, mm. and therefore not bannable. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's, that's uh, because the basically come, come in under the radar. Yeah. You won't notice. Yeah, the world Unless you're me way. and I, somebody actually, <laughs> read, who actually reads logs. You know? <laughs> so what do you do then? Is there like a black hole DNS list of these? Uh, it's, they've been discussing that. Um, yeah, uh, that. Uh, well, then again, you, um, I'm 
I haven't seen that have, have much effect, but well, people could try that. And uh, also, they were they were. Uh, uh, it sounds like the the academics were trying to find a pattern on where these machines ca came from, and maybe deduct some log logic on how to systematically ban them and so forth. But then again, a uh, simple trick like if they would start with a random sequence instead of an alphabetic sequence. Uh, Probably would that would probably help them as well. But so I just hope they don't find this video online and try that. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of my hobbies has been baiting open relay standards mm -hmm. and sort of presenting reply back to their uh, place. And then I run spam B and then I wait for the resources and I would try to like oh, you know, send out yeah. their spam. But could you do something similar with this? Uh, unbox and basically wait for them in and then uh, you probably. Like Probably could. Uh, I think the uh, uh, the uh, the problem would be uh, getting fresh uh, fresh data. Really, uh, like the hosts are actually uh, participating in, in time. Yeah, that could be something interesting as a hmm. test for open SSH. I mean, that, for example, if the user is not listening to the user tables, you could just keep it entertained in another. Yeah, in put them in a, put them in a tiny so old queue or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, for creative people, so so like, level, yeah. So. Yes, Paul. Is there any uh, other analysis that you were able to do on the binary that got copied into Flat 10? I never got a copy of that, so oh. uh, no. Uh, and I, I don't think it's, well, it might have been interesting in one sense, but you know, the, for, at least for this this context, well, but if it's you. communicating it to somewhere, it would be interesting. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll try to try to get hold of the, uh, the copy of that binary again. But um, uh, it lo lo looks looks like mo most of those copies that were discovered were also deleted. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, well, Linux with with root roots, uh, yes, <laughs> will work. So anyway, uh, this presentation is online and includes all refer references to all the articles I've written. If you want the data, there's about 26 megabytes zip that you can download. Yes? Uh, just, mm. just one vital question. Have you learned to not use blog post titles that include phrases like a final roundup yet? Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that was, um, <coughs> no, I was very optimistic at that point. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was young, needed the money. Oh. <laughs> So anyway, I have another announcement to make. If you enjoyed this, OpenSSH comes from Open B OpenBC project. Unfortunately, there is nobody uh, on site here actually selling OpenBC stuff. But you know, get hold of your boss's credit card, go to one of those U URLs, and use it. Um, the other, uh, the other uh, announcement I was going to make is EuroBSDCon call for papers is, ends in. 10 days, I'm sure there are people in this room who would have something they would like to present at Malta in September. Sunny Malta, you can hang out with the geeks for a week. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so if any. Uh,